Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel. Now, I told you recently, after the adventures in America and around Europe, that I was coming back home to not one new Shmi mobile that you've already seen, my Ferrari 296 GTS, but two. This is the car in question. Before we get to that, I'm currently standing surrounded by a whole lot of mess because we pulled everything out of the storeroom because later on, as part of today's adventure, we're gonna go and get some new cabinets so I can show you some of the coolest bits of memorabilia that I've been looking forward to unraveling. The other shot of that is that this room is the cleanest and tidiest it's ever been. There's still some more to go, but finally, everything is in a neat place. These boxes contain some of my favorite things and I am super excited to get all of this out later on. Here at the Sch Museum, I've been super lucky to have a number of different team cars and long-term loans, starting with the Audi RS3 sedan. We then had the Mini Cooper S electric. We had the Cupra Formenta, the Cupra Born. We've had the Skoda Octavia VRS for many miles of driving. A few different transit customs from MSRT. Plus, most recently, the Abarth 500e convertible. Now this is soon to depart, but in the absence of the Skoda Octavia, we needed something else a little bit practical. It also doesn't take a genius to work out. I quite like my Fords. The number of adventures with my Ford GT around the world, the three Focus RSs, starting with the Nitrous Blue Mark III, which became the Project Car Red Edition, and then ultimately the Heritage, which remains in the collection. We have the Transit Custom MSRT, as I mentioned, and then we get to the Mustangs, the GT500 being the ultimate version of the previous generation, the carbon fiber track pack that I bought in the US, now have here in the UK, and my brand new Dark Horse, which is actually waiting over in the US. It's at the dealer, ready for collection super soon, so stay tuned for that. But when it comes to Mustangs, that might not be all. Which brings us to what lurks beneath the cover here, ready to be unveiled. Something that I've driven in a previous guise before, but now with even more tricks up its sleeve and quite a bold color choice as well. Let's get this cover pulled back and unveil the latest arrival. Let's do this then. Let's pull the covers back and unveil the latest arrival here at the Sch Museum, the Ford Mustang Mackie GT in cyber orange. Now, whatever you might think of the Mustang name on Ford's electric SUV, this thing looks good. And being the new GT, we now have 480 horsepower, 860 Newton meters. This thing gets a move on. This color is also extraordinary. I actually thought it was going to be a much brighter orange. It's almost yellow, very similar to another car that's in the collection. Mustang design cues, as I said, I've driven the regular Mustang Mach-E, but this being the Mach-E GT is of course the top of the line, the flagship, the car that's just arrived with only 170 miles on it in total, with many things that I want to bring you along to discover a bit with me, but obviously in the collection where clearly I'm a big Mustang fan, I talk often about one day buying a 60s Mustang, which was so revolutionary for the automotive industry. The idea with the new car is to bring that to the next chapter, the future. So let's dive into this and find out a little bit more about it. The first time that I took a proper look at a Mackie was actually when I was out with that car in California and had the two side by side. But here we are now with the GT500 alongside the Mackie GT here at the Sch Museum. Now, like with the two doors, the coupe and the convertible, the GT is the flagship model, the more powerful version in this case with two electric motors, one at the front, one at the rear, 480 horsepower, as I said. But interestingly, it's the design of this car that I actually really quite like for an SUV for a crossover. It looks incredibly sporty. And in fact, that starts at the very nose of it. Take a look and notice the shape of the grille, the eyebrow line and the headlights. And then when you check out the previous Mustang, the same shape of grille, the same eyebrow line, the same headlights. And the same can be said also for the rear of the car as well. And bringing those designs through, even having these power bulges over the top. Yes, you have a bit of storage space instead of an engine up there, but it's still a very good looking car. And I like the contrast as well with a bright color, in this case, the cyber orange, with the roof line in the gloss black. We've got a lovely panoramic roof, but the way they designed it like this gives it that sloped roof line while still retaining space inside. And I think that's a very, very neat 
trick that they've done there. Around the back, like with the two-door coupe and convertible, you have the triple tail lights, the general design and styling, of course, a few changes for the GT, namely the GT badging, all-wheel drive, as opposed to the previous setup, and again, different wheels, the things that you would expect to find on a car like this. Plug-in point just there to the front left. Let me come and show you the interior of it as well. It's these things that are quite fun. Stand here, press the button, it pops open the door, nice and easy, or you can pull it from this latch just there. Inside, like many EVs, it's quite a simplified interior. You've got these amazing animations on the dashboard and the central screen, very large central screen in there that gives you a lot of control. Obviously your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, comfortable seats, plenty of space as well for your passengers in the back. Again, press the button, it feeds the door to you, pop it open and you can see back here, plenty of legroom. That's actually further back than my regular position. It has a comfort access. It tucks itself forwards when you're ready to step in, come round towards the back. You can open the boot with the key, with the button or with the foot underneath give that a little wave, it will pop open. And this is what's gonna be useful today for our errand that we're about to be running, taking this over to Ikea, because of course we need to go and buy some cabinets to feature some of this memorabilia that I want to show you a little bit later on. That has not closed at the press of a button. Let me press it, there we go. Clearly didn't press it properly. But overall, this is a car that retails for about 76,000 pounds, which I would say puts it firmly in the mid high end of these kinds of cars. We've got a 98.7 kilowatt hour battery, which is actually quite large compared to some of the others. In fact, two and a half times that of the Abarth 500E, which I struggle with due to the range that the car is able to carry out. And that's actually a 42,000 pound car that we have over there. Gives you an idea of the positioning of this, but we should probably get ready to pull it on out and head on over to Ikea, because we've got an errand to run. Before going anywhere, you need to know about Car Vertical. Whether you're thinking about buying a new car or if you're curious to check your own to find out the history of it, exactly as I did prior to purchasing the Clio V6, and the BMW 1M. If you're looking at buying a Mac-E, there are a few things you'd want to know. And I'm gonna show you the luggage space up at the front, a double pull of the lever down here, because of course, without an engine, this is where you have some storage space. And in fact, Ford being Ford in here, where we have the charging cables, they're blue to match the blue oval. Another thing I would thoroughly recommend is to run a car vertical check. Car vertical are connected to all sorts of government databases and insurance registries in many countries around the world to help find out whether the car that you're looking at has any negative history, things like whether it's been stolen, whether there's any accident damage, whether the mileage has been rolled back, all to save you time and money. But then if you're looking to buy a Mackie, take for example, this car, you probably want to know about its history. You'd want to know that it's been involved in an accident, even if it's now been repaired, to have an understanding of what it's been through. Also, check out this Mustang GT convertible that's had quite the shunt. Again, you'd want to know about it. Now, those are accident damage photos pulled in from car crash auction sites, but also some information about this Mustang EcoBoost Coupe with the mileage, some slightly skeptical mileage figures there being presented in the car vertical report. Let me take a seat in here then, and when I close the door, foot on the brake, press the start button, comfort access, pulls my seat forwards. You've got everything you could want between the two systems in here, all of your settings, your apps, your different controls. But if you'd like to run a check with Car Vertical, make sure to use the code SHME150 for 10% off your report. I'll pop the link in the description down below to head on over and check that out and make sure you save yourself time and money when you're looking to buy a car. For now, let's get moving. It feels very cliched for the channel that the first journey we're doing in a practical car is to go to Ikea Wembley, but hey, needs must. And that's the purpose of having a vehicle like this in the fleet, right? We like to have this rotation, but having a car that you can go out and use, and we've used the Skoda Octavia VRS that we've had for the previous nine or 10 months or so, basically for that. Now in steps this, which will be an interesting experience on some of the longer journeys we've got coming up. But for today is our weapon of choice to head to pick up the trio of cabinets. Now, when you're driving here, first impressions, right? First impressions in the car. One, you feel very comfortable quickly. The brake pedal, perhaps a little bit fiddly that you need to get used to. It's obviously to do with the regeneration and there's a slightly strange sensation on it, but everything just works. Fair play to Ford. Everything in here is very easy to figure out, very comfortable, very smooth, 
instantly at your fingertips. Now, I drove a Mackie for the first time, I wanna say two and a half years ago, quite a while back, and obviously this is a big step up, a lot more power, and if you put your foot down and boot it, you absolutely feel that. And a few changes as well to the UK version of the car, in that you have uh, untamed as opposed to unbridled for your maximum power mode, but just driving an active at the moment, the normal everyday type drive, you also have whisper if you want to make it softer, calmer. Now, I do have a point to make about the back a little bit later on, which our cabinets are gonna be experiencing today. Uh, we'll get to that. Up front, very soft, very comfortable, very gentle, very easy going. Screen, very large, very, what's the word? Not resolution wise, but everything is enlarged to make it super easy to see. I'd probably rather things were a little bit smaller on there. I find it almost too much. But as the road opens up, not that you can see it on the video, speed limit instantly, just go. Loads of power, lots and lots of torque, and pretty impressive range so far. Now, early days, obviously, we've got a fair bit of driving to go, but let us cruise on in and make our way towards Ikea. The other way around, though, green light, full throttle. Oh my goodness, tiny bit of wheel spin. <laughs> This thing is fast, really fast. When it comes to electric cars in general, obviously for central London, driving a small city car is great, but they completely lose the plot once you go out on a longer journey on the motorway. Driving a really big electric car, generally to have maximum range and I guess the most premium version, goes the other way in that it's a little bit awkward. You're lugging around a ton of weight pretty pointlessly. So somewhere in the middle is clearly the right balance where you've got decent range and you have an easy enough car to park, particularly here in the UK. And this actually feels a bit like it hits a sweet spot in that context. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a petrol head. I love emotion, I love the sound of an engine, and you obviously don't have that when you're driving something like this. And I go backwards and forwards on it quite a lot, but if I wasn't spoilt enough to have the other cars that I do have in the collection, I'd struggle with this on its own, but don't get me wrong, for a drive like this, when you've got a bit of traffic, it's starting to drizzle, you have the calmness, the quietness, the effortlessness, the ease of driving something like this. It's just a gentle journey, you just get on with it. And then everything's so easy to manage, to control, information is presented super simply and directly. It's, it's great for this kind of thing, this is exactly the kind of car that you wanna be driving. Given the point of having a practical car though, is to use it for practical things, that's why we're heading out today for the first drive to share a little bit more of it with you as we come over towards Wembley and the very famous arch of the Wembley Football Stadium home of the English national team up ahead of us and also a fairly famous IKEA given quite how many times I've been here in the past. I haven't been using any of the adaptive cruise control or anything like that on this particular journey. But one topic to discuss is the new Blue Cruise, which this car sadly doesn't have. Blue Cruise is the new autonomous tech that's been approved here in the UK. And this is the first car in the world that's able to do it. The first car that's in production that legally in the UK you can drive on the motorways taking your hands off, which is a new one, a new sensation. This was ordered just before, so just before the technology was going to become implemented in every single one, which I'd love to try. I'd have loved to have had it on this, but hey, alas, not in this particular case. Anyway, not far to go now, and we can go see if they've got what we want. I can't help but think it would be a little bit terrifying if I added up how much I have spent at this IKEA on things that are at the barn. Even here, it's still directing me, telling me where to go. I like how it brings over the Android Auto onto the screen in front of you. I mean, a lot more cars are doing that these days than they used to, but again, it's the simple things that make living with the car really easy, and that's in many ways what sets this apart. It's looking very busy here, like really busy. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> this is where I can show you quickly the space we've got back here. Uh, pop open the boot and we're greeted by a very convenient luggage space. In fact, we can fold down the seats, got the buttons for that just up there, tuck down both sides and then this will be more than enough space for popping in the boxes later on. Close this back down, let's go do some shopping and head on into Ikea. Hey, it's great to see you. 
in we go to the maze and jungle that is Ikea. Always a fun time, I'm sure everyone can relate. Let's head through. If you've done this before, you know not to go that way, but to squeeze around and go straight down the stairs, which must be around here somewhere. To the, yep, this way, to the lower section. In here, working this out, because that's what we're after. We need a couple of these. You have to go get it from the pickup point. So run through the order. Can't go and just pick it up off a shelf like normal from the amazing warehouse that is Ikea. But uh, we'll get these and then figure out how to load them in a minute, I hope. Memo to self, Ikea at the weekend means very long queues. Very, very long queues. Well, those that know will know. It's Ikea, meatballs, it has to be done. And our boxes arrive. No problem squeezing all of these in the car, in theory, just a slightly dodgy trolley, but we'll make it work. Right, let's take this to the Mackie and go get it loaded. Mark is doing a superb job here, being the trolley guy today over to the garage given it is so full it's clearly shopping season that trolley does not go straight by the way if you're wondering why it looks a little bit peculiar when the first lift is out of service and you hope the second one's gonna work this feels really sketch right now mind the doors please wish us luck there we go <laughs> relieved <laughs> All of these upstairs, well, we'd have brought the, we'd have brought the car down. <laughs> Inside for about 20 minutes, and the car park up a level is nearly completely full. But, hey, magic trick here. One thing that you certainly hope cars like this are going to have, and thankfully this does, automatically unlocks as you walk towards it, wave your foot, pop that open, and time to get loading. Seats already folded. Yeah, nice and easy. Let's figure out a plan. I say that, we don't really need much of a plan. These should just go in. We've got a fairly flat boot floor. Makes it easy. Don't trust this trolley and I do not want to damage our cyber orange paintwork. Get these in and then uh, get ready to head home. Trolley back over there. Shut this down. Fully loaded. We do obviously have the Transit Custom MSRT as well. But today, that has done us very nicely, and I quite enjoy this. Press the button, climb back in, let's head back to the Schmuseum. Nice animation as well. I know this is not exactly rocket science, what we're doing today, and I massively prefer to reverse into parking spaces than go forwards in, but today, given we had to load some heavy boxes, I think the exception is okay obviously we've got the 360 cameras which makes it all very nice and away we go it's about time that i explain something i mentioned earlier the ride in this car in the back now in the front it's great it's smooth it's easy going it's lovely in the back the way it's set up it is rough it's like it reaches the edge of its suspension travel and when you hit a bigger bang you get this complete jolt so for your rear passengers, whoever's back there, the kids, friends, whatever it might be, be conscious that it's not a particularly comfy ride. So much so that we went looking in case it still had the transport blocks in. It felt like that. It felt like that kind of jarring, something's not right for the rear passengers. So the IKEA boxes are currently enjoying a rough ride and let's hope that the glass doesn't get broken on the way. I don't think that's very likely because of how it's packaged. But nonetheless, something to be very conscious about with this car is that in the back, it's not a great ride. Normal roads, completely fine. But when you drive sportily over some bumps, not necessarily the best tarmac, that's when it's gonna stand out the most. And that's when it's really gonna be quite the jarring experience. Another thing I find strange, as I mentioned earlier, is the brake pedal. And that was the perfect example. You never feel like you can get quite the right amount of brake modulation. It's just slightly out. This traffic's not good either, but that's not the car's fault. The braking is just one, you have to give it a small margin just to try and learn and adapt to it as it goes. Something funny here, which I should have thought about earlier. We're filming on my phone at the moment because where's my camera? Um, let me show you if I can press the button. This is both a pro and a con. Underneath all of this, there's a lovely storage area down here. And in that storage area is my camera. Um, that's like 75 kilos of boxes sitting on top. It's gonna to have to wait a moment. Anyway, let's unload some of these and go pop them all in the lounge space, being very careful 
with the glass in here, because the last thing I want to do is smack into some glass with these boxes, pop them all down on the floor, and get ready to get building them very shortly. It turns out I would have had even less hope than I thought, because the one boxes are 21 kilos, the twos are 24, 45 kilos a set, 135 kilos for the whole lot. But we can now rescue my bag. And it's got this like shelf that you can wedge into different positions. Nice little bit of storage down there. Very easy. Done, super simple. Fold this down, where's the button? There's the button. Go put the seats up and we are good to go. Making some progress here. And even, here's one I built earlier. We've got the first ones up in place, but to make life easier, in step the DeWalt tools that we've been relying on here at this museum. And to be completely honest, never did I realize quite how much easier that would make building Ikea stuff than trying to do it with the hand Allen keys, or whatever else it is that they have provided. So give me about, I guess, 20, 30 minutes or so. And this one should also be finished and ready to assemble and start unpacking everything that's behind me. Mission success, third cabinet now assembled. And I have to say, this is the thing, Buy nice stuff from Ikea, it's actually really good for not too much money. Now, I'm gonna go through some of these boxes, but before we get too much into it, I want to show you one thing, and then we're gonna go over to the Mackie for a second. Now, this, as you can probably tell, is from Rimac, or Rimac, or Rimac, or whatever it is, but Rimac in Croatian, from before this car was even called the Nevera. It used to have the code name C2. That's from a while back, in fact, 2020. But what we have inside here is a very cool piece that they kindly gifted to me a few years ago, which is effectively a part of one of the crash test cars that they made obviously for homologation. And they very nicely made it into this amazing display piece. That is the inside door grab handle that survived. And that's really awesome. This is the kind of stuff that I've been collecting for a while. How cool is that to have on display? Like just the most random of cool stuff. So I want to be unboxing a few more of these things because this has obviously lived in a box since it was new. I never had anywhere to put it. But before we go through too much more of this stuff, let me go pop this box away and then let's go have a look at the Mackie. Let's come and take a better look at this then. Car is currently locked. You can either lock it by the way by pressing on this if you want to just lock it rather than touching the key, which is quite nice, or that button obviously to pop it open. Press here, you've also got the key code, which is another dimension in terms of that. We actually still have the protective film on here, so I'm gonna do this. This is immensely satisfying. Oh, perfect, right. Now I'm gonna get that stuck. I'm gonna leave it here for the moment in the door pocket. So the door handles are these, which takes a little bit of getting used to. Your normal window and mirror controls. Step in here. You've got all sorts of different materials, fabrics used over the dashboard, your light controls down here. Everything is easy as you'd expect it. Cruise control, infotainment buttons. You've got the physical rotary here, which I really like having. If we just wake this up for a second, my seat shuffles. Um, this is where at the moment I don't have Android Auto active. You can go into settings. You've got your, well, firstly, Whisper Active Untamed, your one pedal drive, propulsion sound, if you'd like it to make a little bit of noise, assistance in here as well, which is where you can, can turn on the various different controls. And if you go to the heated seat, this is a fun one. Let's say you turn that on. You can then use the rotary to adjust the level, which is convenient, or just press it here if you'd like to cycle through and turn it off as well. I find this all very intuitive, but like I said, when I was driving, I find it all set up for being easy to read without having to look at it very closely, which I would probably prefer a bit more information and slightly smaller text, personally. I get the idea that this is for everyone though. You've got Alexa built in, the Ford Assistant. You've got the phone app, which has a load of stuff on it as well. Into gear is the toggle down here, um, just like in both the Ford GT and in the GT500, which is a fun little nod as well, having that armrest, obviously the kind of storage you would expect to find, big storage bin here, 12 volt, other things around, double charging pad, very convenient. I don't think many cars have two, but driver and passenger can both wirelessly charge their phones down here. 
I like that a lot. Very, very convenient, very functional. In terms of charge, we of course have the SeaTech Charge Storm connected to over there on the wall, can charge two cars at once at 22 kilowatts. In here, I haven't really had to charge it yet. We have done, as you can see already, wow, that's actually crazy, 190 miles in it since taking delivery. Uh, so fairly good innings. We've got 87% now. I find that given I drive it mostly short journeys, haven't had to top it up too much. You can actually see on the camera, I've just noticed, the blinking detectors here. It can see if you're looking at the road and if you're not, it will make sure to remind you and alert you. That's obviously a beneficial feature and quite funny when it actually does it when you're driving. Um, otherwise though, all super simple, plain sailing, very easy to use, very functional, and it all works really well. I love that with the doors, it's just a nice, touch that they've added back here just to show you armrest with some cup holders you've got the 60 40 folding rear seat and obviously this very nice glass roof sorry you can't see too much in here but i love that feeling of openness especially with the shape and styling that they have back here now i haven't really dived into the is it right that this is a mustang topic because i spoke about that when originally driving the Mackey. I think you can look at it both ways. If you think of it as a Mustang in terms of the introduction of something that's a major shakeup to the market and the number of these that you actually see on the road already, I've been amazed by how many I've seen driving, then you can understand it. If you think of it as the follow-on to what we know of Mustangs of the previous era, things like this, and even the new Dark Horse and the Mustang GTD, of course, then it's a very different thing, obviously. In its own right though, as an electric SUV, it's been doing us, or me certainly driving it, really well. I love the size. It's not too big. It's not too small. It doesn't suffer the small car disadvantages that you have with the electric mini and with the Arbath. And it also doesn't have the awkwardness of driving a massive car, which let's face it, I don't really need. I'm normally in the car on my own or with one person and not with very much luggage. And therefore it's a really nice balance. And I think the shape and design of the grill, I say grill, obviously it's not a grill in the normal sense and the headlights look really nice. But I do want to show you a little bit more of what I've been doing with some of the memorabilia. Firstly, I have to apologize for the mess that we have in here. But as you can see, the new IKEA cabinets are now filled with a whole lot of personal memorabilia. And we also have Mark up on the projector, which is really cool. Mark McCann's channel is amazing. Lots of fun. Anyway, let me show you quickly through some of the things. I maybe at some point will have to do a full run through of everything here, but we have, for example, the Amalgam McLaren Senna matching the spec of my car, one to eight scale. If we come down to here, this is where we have various of the model cars that we've offered for you guys in the past. Some personal things like when I drove 200 miles an hour for the very first time ever with BOTB and what is now Auto Vivendi back in March 2013. Some of our heel tread socks, some different things down here when we drove with Mercedes on the Millamelia. In fact, that was the Millamelia lanyard and medal as well. We've got the Shelby GT500 that was from the media launch when I went and drove that. When I was 17, my sister gave me these fluffy dice, which I proudly hung in my Renault Clio. We've got the Scudoni uh, down here as well, always visiting them. When I drove the Shirkle and the G-Wagon, a couple of personal mugs down here, some of the rallies and different tours and things I've been on. This was the uh, press launch of the 675LT. A couple of other things that stand out, like when we were in Japan with Gumball 3000 back in 2018. If we come over this side, I'm not gonna go into everything in detail, but some paint samples, some model cars that stand out, a few different places and things that I've been. A couple of people I have filmed with as well down here, like JM. Chris Fix, Triple F, uh, LFA towels, a bit of a story behind those maybe for one day as well. Need to tidy up the boxes over this way. We've got a couple more model cars and things that all mean something to me, perhaps personally. <laughs> the driving gloves I had from the Millamelia, which I absolutely destroyed. Look at these, totally wrecked. Um, a few other fun things that you might recognize from videos over the years up top. This is, these are the Autosport Awards. Nigel Mansell signed, Jacques Villeneuve signed. That one's fairly obvious considering. Loads of other th fun things. Morgan Three Wheeler helmet, for GT luggage suit or case, race suit as well that goes with it. Basically a room filled with cool stuff. And that's just the start. I mean, well, we spoke about that earlier, but Maybe I need to point out every single thing and explain, but every single item in these actually has a story. Whether it's personal or to do with the channel, there's a story behind it. And that's something I have always wanted to have on display. I've always dreamt of having this kind of stuff 
able to just come and take a look at it. The timing is quite funny because this car is going to be here for three months, that kind of length of time. But obviously it's arrived and I'm about to head to North America for the Dark Horse. Two very different Mustangs in every possible way. Now, to me, this is the Mackie. To me, it's the Mackie. It's hard to get around the idea, the concept of a Mustang being an electric SUV. It's, it's totally wrong to the history, but I, I understand it. And certainly the marketing and looking at the bigger picture, it's just a, a personal thing. As a car, I think so far from the first 200 or so miles that it's gonna be really suitable to the purposes that we have here, using something that's a little bit more practical, has a decent range, and of course, you can go to a fast charger as well out on the road. I think it looks great. I love the color of it. I love the design. I always did, the way you have these cuts to the rear tail lights. I think it carries the Mustang DNA and the design very well into a totally different form factor. They've done a remarkable job with that. I think in terms of usability, aside from what I mentioned about the quite uncomfortable ride that you have if you're sitting in the back of it, it's actually really, really good. It's something that you don't have to spend a lot of time learning or getting used to. You just kind of hop in, off you go, go enjoy the drive. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What do you think about this? I'd wanted to drive a Mackie for a while. I think we started planning this at the very start of 2022, there were some big delays behind the GTs anyway from when it was first introduced. But now that it's here, we'll do some good miles in it. Even when I'm not here, it'll be used as a team car. Probably Brad will find himself behind the wheel for quite a lot of it. And then when we get back, we'll be hitting the road again as well. Anyway, before going to America, there's still a fair bit to come from here in the UK. So yeah, today's been another very long day. It's quite late in the evening. We had a good run to Ikea. We've been unpacking a ton of stuff. We've still got a ton of stuff that we need to pack away, but we're gonna wrap it up for there. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you like the Mustang Mackey GT, but that's it for this time, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.